Good morning, adventurers. My name is Ben, and welcome to a morning show where I sit around, drink some tea, and talk about D&D. Mm. <clears throat> okay, so, first up, for tea and d today, uh, I have my help. It's again, all black mug, um, and a little Caduceus hand at the bottom by the tree there. Um, good, good mug. Always a good mug. Uh, always a good time. Um, and in it, I have my Yogi Throat Comfort Tea, uh... Normally, I have a at least a vague reason as to why I have it. Uh, today, I'm, I just have it because I I like it. It tastes good, so that's why I'm drinking it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that is what we have for TND today. Uh, moving on to what we are actually talking about today, one of maybe the most uh, uh, persistent, I guess, issues that plague uh, D and D games that happen in the world: um, how to make your campaign stick. Or three, specifically, three ways to help you try and make your campaign stick a little bit better than maybe it has. Uh, so, 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 so often uh, you hear about D&D games that they start, they're great for the first, like, two sessions, and then all of a sudden nobody can play, and then suddenly everything just sort of falls apart and... It, people forget or move on or it's been too long and people feel weird about trying to get back into it and it's just it doesn't end up happening and then the, the game is over and um, nobody really knows where the wheels fell off the bus but they fell off the bus somewhere in there so today we're going to talk about three things uh, that you can do to hopefully get your D&D game to stick a little bit better um, <clears throat> I will say that two of the three things are uh, more DM centric um, but they are also uh, something that can be played into a little bit by uh, the characters um, so uh, without further ado let's go ahead and get into it shall we um, so first up uh, my, my first suggestion uh, for helping to get your campaign to stick helping to get uh, the game to hang on for a little bit longer is to lay backstory hooks early and i mean as early as session one um now uh if you're not entirely sure what i mean by this uh pick uh, a couple of characters that might have a uh, semi-volatile backstory that's happening um with them and uh make it confront them in like session one or two uh like early early on most games uh that i hear about failing they say, oh, we got three sessions into it, and then we failed, or we got four sessions. So it's it's before five. So you, you need to get that groundwork laid as early as humanly possible. Highly, highly recommend beginning to weave in as many different backstory hooks as you can. Because the thing is, the players wrote those backstory hooks. They, they are the ones that have given you uh, the material to actually run with. And they are the ones that are the ones that really want to see it through. So, by using that as part of sort of your, like, motivator and enticing piece of uh, information early on, uh, it might get them to uh, be more uh, conscious of trying to get back to it and try to uh, start playing that game again. Um, and players, uh, this one can be uh, thrown your way. When you're creating your backstories, make sure you give your DMs... Uh, hooks that are not anything too too insane to try and work in early on um now that's not to say that a campaign can't start uh like skyrim almost where like oh they're doing something pretty normal and then a dragon attacks and burns down the city and they're the only survivors and oh my god what's going on uh, that obviously can happen for sure it, it's DD. that's actually not even that crazy of a thing to happen but Give them something maybe that isn't, uh, I have a sworn enemy that is a dragon that I've seen one time 30 years ago, and that's it. Yeah, try try to give them a little bit more than that. Um, because honestly, if you, if you don't give them something else to like hook into or give them the space to hook into something, then it's going to be something that is uh, hard for them to actually work with. Uh, that goes for just creating a good backstory in general. But... If you give them some of these softer hooks as well as some harder hooks, you're giving them more room uh, in the immediate future to give you some backstory hook in there, which will in turn hopefully help motivate the game to move on uh, and whatnot like that. Um, in, uh, I think that's everything I have on that point. Uh, that's everything my notes say. Uh, so let's go ahead and go on to number two here. Uh, number two, 
Uh, this one is uh, more DM centric again. Um, leave on a cliffhanger, if at all possible. Leave on. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a cliffhanger. Something that is exciting to the players for the first five sessions. I know that's a lot of like legwork and jumping through hoops to get them to exciting points for the first five different sessions. But if you can get them to those exciting points for five different sessions in a row, then it will have become more of like, oh my God, what's happening next? What's happening next? What's happening next? And that will be their immediate reaction kind of whenever you're playing the game. Um, and so if you can successfully like line that sort of thing up for them, then I think you are in a really, really good position to give yourself uh, a longer lasting campaign just by nature of the fact that they are going to be excited to see what happens next. Also, uh, if you are uh, trying to get this game off the ground, uh, and this, particularly if they're newer players or they, they have, uh, you know, a lot of other things going on in life, if you leave them with something that is exciting and enticing, they are more likely to think of it as an actual uh, piece of their schedule as opposed to a game that they're trying to fit in somewhere. You know what I mean? Like... D&D uh, &D is obviously a game. It, it is it is less important than a lot of other uh, big, big things that happen in life. But if you can successfully entice your players uh, into thinking of it more as like a, um, a, a chunk of time to be invested in as opposed to going to play a game, because investing time versus playing a game are very, very different like contexts that those things come in. So if you can leave it on a cliffhanger or leave it on, like I said before, one of those backstory hooks that is like super intense or very intriguing to them, then they are more likely to be willing to invest the time in it moving forward. And all of that is to say, obviously, uh, you're trying to set up the more like grand narrative of the whole thing, the bigger, wider story. Um, if you're running a module, that's di more difficult to do than if you're running a homebrew campaign. There's a bunch of different layers here. Uh, I'm definitely, definitely stripping it down and simplifying it to a degree that uh, it is almost undeserving of because of the fact that, like, it, I'm just trying to lay out some strategies for you here uh, that you could try to implement in order to, like, get things moving for you. Um, because the hope is that you, you get to do these games and you get to keep playing them and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, my third and final tip, I will have a, an honorable mention or two after this one. But my third major tip uh, is schedule your next game before you leave from the one that you're playing. Um, if that means that you have to end 10 minutes earlier so that everybody can, like, get out their calendars and sit down and schedule the next one great then end 10 minutes earlier honestly uh having it written in calendars is more important than leaving off on a cliffhanger or laying that last little thread of a backstory i promise you if people are have already put it into their schedule then it is going to be much more concrete for them than if you're like yeah we'll figure it out in the upcoming week or something like that uh, if you can have everybody sit down and schedule out that next game in the last 10 minutes of the session that you're playing. It will make your life so much easier, one, for scheduling, because most of the time it ends up becoming a group text thing that uh, just sort of gets lost in uh, the flow of life, um, and people will respond to it at their leisure as opposed to you're sitting in front of them, so they have to talk to you now. Um, and, uh, again, they have to talk to you now about it. Like, the, there can be a, oh, I don't know about this, well, the response to that is, okay, well, let's pencil in this data, and as soon as you know, let us know. Do you know when you're going to know? Because it'd be great to be able to get this locked in. Um, having those times set already is far and away, far and away, <laughs> the best way to keep your campaign going. Uh, I know it's kind of difficult uh, sometimes with uh, people having to run everywhere, do a bunch of different things, or if it's a group of all new players or people who don't know each other that well or even even potentially even more uh old old friends who are super comfortable with each other it it becomes way more difficult somehow like immediately to actually get any of those things hammered down um without 
just sort of straight up saying, this is when we were playing next time. I will see you guys then. Um, so do your best to get that schedule laid out before everybody leaves. Um, if you can't, try and get a rough date or a rough time in. Um, I know that there are plenty of people out there who push for like every week on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. or something like that. It I'm making up numbers and days and everything here. Um, that's great, but it, life happens and people aren't always going to be able to do that. And that's just kind of the way that is. Um, that That is the other thing. You have to understand that you're going to have to be flexible because they are people are coming to play this game with you. But it is a game and life does happen. Um, so, do your best to schedule ahead of time. But don't forget, you will need to be a little bit flexible. Um, but if you can get that scheduled prior to people leaving the location that you are playing at or leaving the video call or whatever you're gonna have a lot better of a time trying to make sure schedules get worked out um and that is just kind of the way that it goes and that that's what happens um my biggest honorable mention here uh is one that it sounds like kind of a jerk thing to do but hang with me on this for a second um and it is be very selective about who you let in to your group uh, if you are the one setting up the group um, or be very selective about the groups that you join if you're not the one setting up the group um, in that you should uh, ha if you don't have any experience playing then sure start with uh, people you're comfortable with more than likely don't just join a random group necessarily but uh, if you have had this experience several times of like groups starting and failing and starting and failing and starting and failing um, be selective about who you join groups with or who you would let into groups. Uh, this start and fail sort of thing is usually the result of like a couple of people that have dragged their feet and then the entire group has fallen apart or something like that. It's not necessarily the fault of those people, but whoever starts that like, mm, I don't know, ball rolling, that is the wh the ball that ends up like crushing the whole group because it rolls down the mountain, picks up enough snow and then buries everybody. Um, so the people who are ready and willing immediately to jump back into the next game those are the people that maybe you want to move towards the top of the list of people you want to join a group with maybe maybe um and it, it is also something that uh will help enhance the experience overall because those are probably going to be the people that are putting in more stock to the game that you have uh in front of you uh and so i definitely recommend uh making sure that you are surrounding yourself with the people who are really uh excited and engaged with the game um, next honorable mention here, um, oh god, I can't read my own handwriting. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> be okay with, uh, I, my handwriting is all over the place, it's fine. Uh, be okay with people missing from games. Um, if you've got a party of, I don't know, say five people in the DM, be okay with like a four out of five rule. Like if four out of five of the people are there, play the game. And that's just that's just what it is. Uh, play, Be willing to play the game without the full party there and just have that party member understand that they are either going to be autopiloted or they're going to fade into the background for something. Um, there are some things where they uh, honestly can't really uh, be auto or be faded into the background for. Like if the party is going to jump planes or something like that, they kind of have to go with them, which means they have to be okay with being autopiloted and potentially suffer the consequences of that. And by suffer the consequences, I mean if the party gets into a fight and their character goes down because they couldn't make it to the game for whatever reason, that, that, they, they kind of have to be okay with that uh, at the session zero with the four out of five rule. Um, and then uh, my last honorable mention here uh, is kind of hitting on what I just talked about. Have a session zero. Make sure you have a session zero where everybody is on the same page. Don't let there be any gray areas here. Make sure everybody knows exactly what they are signing up for, exactly what they're getting into. Is this campaign going to last 10 sessions? Are you planning on it being two years long? Do you want it to run from levels 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 5 to 10, 1 to 20, 10 to 20? Like, make sure you sort of hash out exactly what it is that you are expecting of the people who are coming to play at the same table with you. Um, be that a, as a player or a DM. The DM is the one that should be facilitating, facilitating session zero. But you, as a player, have as much agency as the DM to say, hey, I want to make sure we've got all of this sort of squared away. We're all on the same page in this area. 
Session zero is important. And it, it gets overlooked for a lot of just random home games that crop up. And a lot of times, the ones that end up failing didn't have a session zero to begin with. And that's just how it goes. I don't know what else to tell you on that one. Um, so anyway, those are three, technically six, I guess, uh, because those honorable mentions ended up being their whole own thing, even though I only meant to like kind of bullet them. Uh, three, six, uh, ways to try and make sure your game sticks. Try and make sure your game lasts that initial hurdle of just getting off the ground. Um, hopefully any of that is helpful to you guys. Um, I This is something I have sort of built up off of listening to other people and off of having games that have fallen apart myself. Um, so that is everything I have to talk to you guys about on that. Next up, we have the shows for Monday. That's today. Um, first up, uh, we have... Uh, Flavor City, which is my uh, show, we are getting right towards the end of it here. There are two more episodes left, including the one that is releasing tonight um, on my YouTube channel. So check that out. Um, so we have Flavor City, The Paper Dungeon, Chromatic Dice, Beyond the Realms, Unprepared Casters, Greetings Adventurers, Bards of New York, Hapless Heroes, Aoyun Adventures, Cast Party, Three Black Halflings, Hello from the Magic Tavern, King Leo D&D, Antiheroes Anonymous, and The Tabletop Tavern. Uh, check out any of those shows um they are all entertaining uh in their own special ways uh definitely throw some support to those smaller shows everybody could use a little bit um i highly highly recommend uh just stepping out of your comfort zone trying an episode of one of these things and seeing if it is if it's for you uh because if it is then hey you found something you really like and if not honestly you didn't lose that much time uh, I'm going to be totally honest with you. <laughs> um, so, that is everything I have to talk to you guys about today. Thank you so much for making me part of your morning routine. I really do appreciate it. And thank you so much, in particular, to my patrons. You guys are the ones that make this show possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, uh, there's a link to my Patreon in the description of this episode. I am updating everything right now so that it is ready to, like, launch, I guess. Soft launch, hard relaunch, whatever you want to call it. Uh... March 1 is going to be that launch date. Um, I've got some exciting stuff coming. I th I'm excited about it. I hope that you guys are excited about it too. Um, I will give you a better rundown of everything tomorrow, I think. Um, because, uh, yeah, I want to keep it uh, not a surprise, but like, I don't want to be pushing it now before all of it is live. So I'm going to push it tomorrow when all of it is live. Um, oops. Uh, so check that out uh, if you're interested. Thank you guys so much once again for tuning in, and uh, don't forget, drink tea, play D&D, &D, and keep on rolling.